It is Tiki Technical Tuesday. We are inside of our Trotec laser cutter because this episode is all about designing for the laser, specifically our brand new flat pack Exotica project. Before we dive into things, yes, you may have noticed I have a bandage on my hand. I'm completely fine. I had to have some elective surgery done. It should heal up quickly and hopefully within a week, I'll be back to normal studio life. The idea for this flat pack Exotica project came from an idea I sketched when we got our very first laser cutter, the Glowforge, well over a year ago, I guess two years ago? I don't know. Time has no meaning anymore. Anyway, I'm going to go back to one of my older sketchbooks. Yes, I keep all of my sketchbooks. I suggest you do the same. They're great reference. That's why you have a sketchbook. Let's take a look. Wait a minute. Is that a Tiki Bob? It is a Tiki Bob. That's right. We want to pay homage to the very first Tiki mug ever made, the classic Tiki Bob. Tiki Bob was born in 1955 and was designed by Alec Ewell Thornton. God, I hope I said that right. For the restaurant named, appropriately, Tiki Bob's. The restaurant is sadly gone, but the location still exists, and most importantly, the original Tiki Bob out in front still exists. You can go visit it, say hi to it, even give it a hug. Now, we have done homages before. In fact, many Tiki artists and Polynesian pop enthusiasts have paid homage to this mug. We did it a while ago with our peer post, Bob, and I thought it would make a great subject for a flat pack Exotica. I took a photo of the sketch in my sketchbook and brought that into Procreate on my iPad where I started to delve into the design a little deeper. I wanted to do a mid-century mod style piece of driftwood with a bob face on it. I wanted this to hang on a wall or sit on a tabletop. And most importantly, I wanted you to be able to change its facial expressions. Hence the name Swapo Bob. Another thing I had to figure out for this flat pack Exotica project was how we're gonna hold it all together. When we do our library of libations, these are held together with these brass, uh, sometimes they're called Chicago bolts or barrel bolts. Um, they're very beautiful, they work well, but they're also very expensive and they might be a little finicky to ship. With our very first flat pack Exotica piece, we used this little pin to hold things together and it worked extremely well, but I wanted to try something a little different for this new design. I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I could make some sort of little clip that would just click together and hold everything together and you didn't have to worry about losing the little peg. With that design challenge in mind, I hopped onto my computer and opened up Adobe Illustrator. It's a vector illustration program. And I laid out all the individual layers that I'd want to cut out of both wood and acrylic to make the swap bob Each layer, I colored a different color to keep kind of things in order in my head. And I would draw each layer from both a side and a front view which would help me kind of figure out how all of these pieces are going to sit together in the final model. I'm not going to lie, it got a little complicated, and yes, I did make a lot of mistakes. <sighs> Okie dokie. I think that I've got everything figured out. At least I've got to figure it out enough to do a test cut. I'm going to test cut this out of an MDF. It's like a medium density fiber board, I guess that's what it stands for. I don't know. So I've just saved this to the Dropbox, which is going to be read by the laser over in the studio where Denise is prepping for the cut. I'm gonna head over there right now. This is always the most exciting part, the first cut. Will it work? I don't know. I hope that I've set up my angles and layers correctly. We're gonna find out. This is the magical time where what I drew is going to jump into reality. It's super cool. So here we go, the Trotec laser in action. I never get tired of watching this thing go. It is super fast and super cool to watch. And look at this. There you can see the fancy pants clips that I am hoping will hold this piece together and be very easy to use. After the parts are cut, we have to pull them out of the laser and then painstakingly peel off all of the masking. The MDF wood is covered with like a adhesive paper layer, and that layer is there to keep your actual wood surface from getting scorched by the laser. I mean, remember the laser is burning its way through the wood to make these cuts. Also, don't be alarmed by that little pink thing that you see there. We are using temporary acrylic for the acrylic portions of the Swapabob, just to make sure all the parts fit and look good before we commit 
to the real good stuff. Okay, so that was mostly a success. Um, not perfect, but you know, it's, it was good. It was a good first step. So I'm going to go back to the computer now and make some changes and we'll try it again. Okay, we made the changes. I hope they work. Denise is about to cut it. Let's all cross our fingers. As you may have guessed, it's the clips that are kind of being a little difficult right now. I'm doing some subtle redesigns on them and trying to get them to not fail while we click together this otherwise excellent design. So it was mostly a success, except for my fancy little clip idea. They worked, but they broke. They just didn't have enough flex to survive the initial click-in process. Some of them did, these ones on the bottom worked out great, but some of the top ones gave way. MDF does have a little bit of a spring, but not that much, and clearly this design needs to be tweaked. So we went back to the drawing board and I completely rethought things. I added these really long arched spring clip tops, and on the bottom, I just put a little hook catch. I realized the bottom sections did not need to have any spring at all. I put all the spring in the top and I gave them plenty of spring action. It's all these nice loops and dupes, which I think are gonna do a great job in giving you plenty of wiggle room when you assemble this at home on your very own. I am so happy to report that the redesign was a success. Here you can see the spring section clicked in and then listen, Oh, so satisfying, so secure. Let's go and cut the real deal. I am very grateful for Miss Antiki because the laser needs to use a Windows computer to operate and I don't know how to do that. And she's figured everything out. I'm very lucky. Mrs. Vantiki has patiently nested parts together onto individual sheets, uh, which is the way that we'll be shipping them, hence the name Flatpak Exotica. Unlike the ornament, the swap bob involves several different materials. We're going to use two sheets of a beautiful walnut ply, and then we're also going to use a black acrylic and a white acrylic layer. So here we are. I believe this is how the walnut pieces will be shipping in this new flat pack piece. I I'm very pleased with the overall results. Ignore this blue tape. This is just because this was some of the testing walnut that we have. The actual walnut will not have that. And they stack very nicely. I believe in order to ship this, it'll be two stacks of walnut and two stacks of acrylic. We're going to have a black acrylic piece. That'll be the back of the face. And then we've also got the white faces. So happy. I'm especially happy about squeezing instructions to this one. And I love this little extra kind of window that we put around the most delicate parts so that when these are broken out by you, the person that's gonna have to assemble this, you, you will be much, much less likely to damage the delicate little catching pins. Yeah. Of course, you can't have a swap of Bob without some faces to swap out. So as soon as we got the walnut figured out, Mrs. Vantiki hopped onto some beautiful, buttery, frosted white acrylic to make an assortment of faces. Okay, I think that we've got all the parts figured out. Let's see how they go together. I cannot begin to tell you how satisfying it is to click together this final finished production model. It is so cool to take something out of your sketchbook, bring it into a computer, and then see a actual robot holding a laser make it into a 3D object. Yes, I have cut this before out of MDF, but seeing it in the final materials is just magical. It looks spectacular. Meet Swapobob, which for the first time ever can change his expressions. That's right. Bob is no longer permanently happy. Sometimes he is a little meh, and that's okay. Crafted from walnut veneers and beautiful laser-cut acrylic, he can easily hang on a wall or be displayed on a desktop. Swapping expressions is a snap! And guess what? You can store additional faces in the back. So clever! swap -a -bomb ships with two expressions, a happy and a meh. And we've got plenty of other expressions in the works, including some seasonal varieties. 
So there you have it. It's our newest flat pack Exotica piece. Swapo Bob. So happy with the end result. It's just adorable. I cannot wait to hang one on my wall. And the best news of all is you can hang one on your wall. That's right, Swapa Bob is currently live in our store. I'll put the link in the description for this video. Um, yeah, uh, Mrs. Vantiki has cut 50 of them so far. We have materials to make more, and we just love this little guy. Thank you for coming on the journey of creation, going from paper to practice models, test plastics to the final piece. It was quite an adventure, and I will see you on the next Tiki Technical Tuesday.